Ok, vamos a empezar. Espérate. Ah, ya empezaste. Ok, gracias. Welcome. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Hi. Bienvenidas. Gracias. Thank you. We're gonna do a little... Uh, en español, por favor. En español, sí. Okay. <risa> Bienvenidas al mes de la herencia hispana. Esto es una entrevista para conocer un poquito más de nuestras maestras. Ok, so the questions are going to be English or kids can understand, right? Yes. No, yes. Yes. Spanish. Spanish, ok. Alright, so we're going to begin with what is your name and what is your role in the school? Ok. So I am Ms. Rivera and I am a reading interventionist. My name is Ms. Morales and I am a first grade teacher. My name is Ms. Malandrana and I'm a first grade teacher as well. Alright, thank you ladies. Um, second question, where were you born? I was born and raised in New York. Okay. Uh, I was born in Havana, Cuba. I was born in Hialeah, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you please tell me what is your family's country of origin? Oh, uh, we are from Puerto Rico. We are from Cuba. My father's Mexican and my mother's from Nicaragua. Hey, thank you, ladies. Um, how long have you lived in the United States? In case you were born here, your parents, how long have your parents been in the United States? I was born here, uh, but my mother came to New York from Puerto Rico in her early teens, and my dad, he was very little, I think four or five, when he came to New York. Um, I was born in Cuba, so I have been living here for 25 years. No, sorry, 23 years. I was born here. Um, my parents have 37 years already in this country. Um, All right. Okay. <laughs> 49 Street. Yes. Yeah. Be careful with the numbers. We can't. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you always known English and or Spanish? And how do you learn either English or Spanish? English is my first language, and my mother made it a point to teach us Spanish because my dad doesn't speak very well Spanish. Okay. All right. Uh, so Spanish was my first language, and I came here when I was five. So I actually was in the ESOL program until I was in until fourth grade. So I, that's how I was able to learn English. Oh, welcome to the club. Yeah. Okay. All right. In my case. Um, even though I was born here, I, my first language is Spanish. Um, my first language is Spanish. I actually was also in the use of program um, because my parents just spoke Spanish. To this day, my parents still speak only Spanish. They understand the English um, and defend themselves in English when they have to. But um, I was in the use of program, so I was in fourth grade. I loved it. Yeah, it was, so it was very then, inclusive. Yes, I, back then was very different. So okay. yes, I loved it. Um, so that's very, <clears throat> I, I learned English by just going to school. Funny thing about it is that even though Spanish is my first language, I kind of feel like I lost my first language because I speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak Spanish when I have to, but I will do a little Spanish. Yeah, Spanish is the language of um, South or I would say. All right, so um, do you know what motivated your family, you or your family, to come to the United States? Yeah, so my family, uh, my parents' family, they came in the 60s, right, early, even like late 50s. So um, financial reasons, so better opportunities in the, you know, the United States, or at least the continental United States. Um, so yeah, so just to do better. Better life. Better life, yeah. Better financial opportunities. So my parents came here uh, through something called the Cuban Adjustment Act. Um, and basically what that was is that the United States was giving Cubans, um, it was giving Cuba 20,000 visas. And so uh, from 1994 up until around the early 2000s. And it's kind of like a lottery and then one person would get chosen in Cuba. And that person would have the opportunity to bring their, their spouse and their children and then they would come here and we were chosen. So that's how it kind of worked. And obviously for the same reason Ms. Rivera said, for better opportunities and um, and also because Cuba is communism. So that's what we do. Uh, my parents came because of the same reason like everyone to be sure for the country for better opportunities. Um, my parents came in the 80s, 
so um, to kind of say my, my sister was born because I have an older sister too she was born in the United States so she came first with my brother and then my parents came with her so we came by themselves to my house and I was actually my mom didn't know she was pregnant with me when she was she was really cool <laughs> so that's amazing Okay, so what is that this kind of tradition that you wish that you wish to pass down into your family? Something that you learn that you still practice from your parents? Um, oh my god, there's so many, especially now with the holidays coming up. Um, mm -hmm. but honestly I would say like just being with family. Like we try to get together every Sunday and someone takes turns cooking. Um, so one particular tradition I can't really say, but just like the United Family Unit being together and spending time together and eating. Yeah. <laughs> eating. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Uh, so my husband is Trinidadian um, and American and so he obviously did his family speaks English. So for me a huge one is Noche Buena which is Christmas Eve that's very important. So I always tell him that we spend uh, Noche Buena with my family and then Christmas Day with his family. Um, and just like Mr. Rivera had mentioned, uh, definitely keeping the family unit and also um, actually speaking Spanish and teaching our children Spanish. That's really important so they can be bilingual. Uh, tradition for me would be, yes, the family, the unity of family. Um, that's extremely important. Um, the cooking, I don't cook. So I lost that tradition. I will lose that tradition. <laughs> Hopefully my sister-in-law, Miss Moraz, will continue the Puerto Rican tradition of oh. making food because uh, yeah. Uh, she's probably gonna say no. Yes. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, just being with family, yes, teaching my child, my daughter Spanish, I find that extremely important. Um, and teaching her even though she was born here and I was born here where her grandparents come from and why they came here and what, what were the struggles that they went through. Um, that I would love for her to learn. And another big tradition that I will never forget just because she was born is three day uh, kings, which in Spanish is Dia de los Reyes. So she was born, so I always said that she is my gift from the because she was born that day. Um, from there on, I mean, from at least in the Mexican side, they do the the ropa, that's what they call it, you know, with the little babies hitting inside. Oh, yeah, the and little whoever, baby Jesus kid. Yeah, yeah, and whoever gets like the biggest baby, there's three big babies, is the one that has to throw a party in February. So that's a big tradition for us, and that, and I know that every time we woke up, Jesus, like everyone tries to cheat. <laughs> so they don't get the babies, or like the little babies, you would have to, um, it's like, a, it's just to be with family, right? Yeah. The little babies is you have to bring food, and then the big babies is. Whoever has the biggest, that's where the party will be. Yeah. So everyone will try and avoid the big baby. Okay, so um, what do you think are the contributions of Hispanics in the United States? Oh, wow, so or many. Hispanic oh, wow. Yeah, so many. Um, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is music, especially coming from New York and the salsa in you know, the 70s and 80s. Um, even the huge like uh, hip hop contribution to Puerto Ricans in New York in the beginning. So for me, it would be music. Um, yeah, definitely that uh, food. I think is a huge one. Um, definitely dancing. I think uh, work ethic is a huge one as well. Because um, you know this is the land of opportunity, so people come here and they kind of. Um, you know, everybody's kind of like a melting pot and everybody kind of pieces together. So I think that definitely their culture makes us in with what Mr. Barrow was saying. I keep stealing your answers. That's okay. <laughs> I'm piggybacking <laughs> off of her. So apparently I sat on the wrong side of the chair because I was going to say that hoping that you stuck with food and I was going to say the opportunity. But yeah. yes, I think it fits in perfectly well. Yeah. Like it's, you know, our music our food, our traditions, and the family unity. I think yeah. that with Hispanic, no matter where you're from, Hispanics always stick together. We might criticize one another because we're Hispanics, <laughs> but at the end of the day, a Hispanic will always 
back up another Hispanic. You understand? Yeah. Um, I think that that's I think that's the biggest thing. And as much as we're criticized, because we are criticized, and we even criticize our own Hispanic culture too. I think it's um, the fact that we are fighters, like you said. We we all fight for something to better ourselves because we're given that opportunity. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing from the Hispanic culture that even though we, we come here to work and to fight, mm-hmm. not everyone, there's always rotten apples in every hand, but that is our main goal. That not, no one leaves their country yeah. just to leave their country. They leave their country to want something better if it's for their children or for themselves, but just for a better opportunity. Yes, and we, I believe that we have, like, as Hispanics, we have contributed a lot to the United States, but we also are grateful for the opportunities yes. we have in this country and everything that we are able to accomplish. And give and our opportunity. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. Okay, so uh, on a lighter point, all right, <laughs> a phrase or saying, okay, or expression that you know that reminds you of your country. <laughs> oh, man. Um, if I if I go with the first one that came to mind, I, I think of Ivanito, right? Oh, but we use it, oh, we true. use it in some so ways, bad ways. Um, technically, it means like poor thing, but we use it in positive light and negative light. Um, even my kids will say or see something, they're like, "Oh, Dito." So it's just one of them Puerto Rican phrases that kind of everyone uses. <laughs> um, all right, so I have two. One is "Eola," which uh, means like "What's up." Basically, and the other one is acere, so they would go acere like that, and that means like hey, but it's like it's just like a thing that only Cubans say. I've only heard Cubans say that, and like here in Miami, I hear it a lot as well. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Thank you, Larry.